Okay, so for the next exercise, I'm gonna take you through just extruding a simple box. From there, we're going to unfold that box to show you how you could essentially build it physically. And then from there, we're gonna just apply a really simple pattern to that unfolded surface. And then we're gonna take that unfolded surface and refold it back onto our 3D model. So that way you can see the relationship between the flat version and the folded version. And once we get it folded on there and hide the actual 3D object, you'll see our pattern on it. And then from there you can analyze it, see if you like it, make changes. And then from there you could take it to the laser cutter and have it actually laser cut. And then you could fold it into place and have a physical version. It's similar to what we've got going, like these little objects right here kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and file save as. Save as, yeah. And I'm going to call this the unfolded poly surface. And I'm going to change the second part of it to manual pattern application and I'm just gonna have my name at the end there and I'm gonna hit save and now that I've done that this is a new file and I can get rid of our old exercises and just delete them because they have their own files Okay, so for this exercise, we will begin by just, let's use some actual solid boxy objects here. So I'm just going to open this up. It's called solid creation. So a lot of what we've been doing thus far has, we've been starting off with curves, line work, turning them into surfaces, and then from there turning those surfaces into solids. This toolbar right here, skips all the curves and skips all the surfaces and gets straight to the solids. So for instance, and I'll just do real quickly a simple box. If I choose 0, 0, 0 as my center point, I can go in and I'm just going to make it any size for now. But you click where you how big you want your base and then you can click how tall you want it. And it's already created your solid surface for you there. Um, I'm just going to go through and show you a couple of others. So there's that version of it. And you can also do center of a sphere. This one uses the diameter instead of the center. So you create that, that diameter of that sphere and it'll create it for you. And then there's also some ellipse type shapes where you can do a center, create your ellipse for yourself and then choose a height create solid shapes for yourself. We even have some more interesting like tube-like shapes, right? And we can even go in and do like a torus shape or a donut, right? And so I suggest everybody look through all these. Um, this last one right here is a lot of the commands we've already used, like extrude surface extrude surface along curve. So we've, we've used some of these already. Um, not these bottom ones, these ones are a little bit different. But, what was that? You weren't able to achieve any of these shapes? No, the end, those are the end, the last one. This right here? Yeah. Extrude surface? You have to have a surface that you can. Yeah. So I'm gonna delete all that because we don't need it. The only one I want is a box because that's what it's going to easily, easily unfold. But a box is kind of boring, right? It's very static. It's too simple. So what I'm going to do is with a gumball on and my planer on and ortho, I'm just going to start selecting some uh, edges here and I'm going to start to manipulate edge surfaces and create more of an interesting form. The way to do that is to hold control and shift down 
and select an edge. And now that I have that edge selected, I'm going to go ahead and just start to push and pull. So you can start to see that I'm manipulating this shape here and maybe I want to select this edge now. Maybe I want to pull this out. And I'm going to select this one. And maybe I'll bring it in. And go ahead and do this at your own free will. Um, try to just do similar moves. Make sure to stay orthogonal. I don't want to see any hyperbolic today. And everybody should know what hyperbolic is, right? It's the warped surfaces, like lofting, what lofting gives you, those curvatures. Mm -hmm. We don't want any of that. We just want straight, planar surfaces. So I'm going to push this in like that. And maybe I want to just move in one last one here. That. And I'm going to do one that is going to go upward. So I've kind of created just, you know, a unique boxy shape here, right? There's nothing too special about this. It's pretty basic. I think I'm going to do one more move here which is I'm just going to select one of these bottom edges and I'm going to move it up. Now you see what I just did? I moved that up and look what it did here. It turned this into a hyperbolic surface where it's not flat. So that's an issue. We definitely don't want that. As soon as you see something like this happening, where you get a grid on there, that means that your surface is no longer flat and now it has a little bit of curvature and we don't want any curvature in our in our um, in our object. Okay, so I kind of have a box going here, and so what I'm going to go ahead and do is use the unfold command. So I'm going to unfold surface or unroll. Sorry, I've been calling it unfold this whole time. So it's unroll surface, and I'm going to hit that. Now it's going to give me some options here. It's going to say select curve or poly surface to enroll. I already have it selected. And it's going to give us options if we want it to explode, whether we want labels, and whether we want to keep the properties. I'm going to show you each one of these. It's called unroll surface. So I'll show you what exploded is like. And I'm going to show you no labels and keep properties no. So I actually need to move my object because you'll see that part of the unroll uh, ended up underneath my object. And so you see what it did there. It unrolled all six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that corresponds with all six sides of this shape. So that's one way to unroll. And let's try unrolling again. So I'm going to unroll. And this time I'm going to say explode no. So when I hit enter, now it's given me something that's a little bit more like origami. So it's retained its shape, and each one of these is saved or is relationship has a relationship on one edge. And so this is more of something that we want to achieve here. You could throw this in a laser cutter, and it could cut that profile for you out. And then it's called scoring, which is drawing a light line. So that way you can fold paper or your whatever material you're using. And so you could do score lines and cut lines. Really easy with this shape, right? So this is a simple form, but if we were doing something a little more complex, maybe you wouldn't know the relationship between what is what, right? So I'm going to unroll it one more time. This time I'm going to say explode no, because I want it to be that continuous surface, but since I want to know, I want to actually turn the labels on to yes. And so when I do that, you'll see it gives you a bunch of numbers. All these numbers are going to correspond with your three-dimensional object. So if we go ahead and find one, 
one is here and let's look for one so one is here right so that means that this plane here is actually this plane here so it helps you sort of uh, guide yourself around this object you can see where zero is so zero is there so that means that this is zero right here and you'll notice when you unroll something it doesn't come out perfect you can see that the zero is here and maybe and the zero is here and it's kinda like it's the wrong direction right you'd need to rotate you'd need to rotate this object around in order to get this aligned to be aligned with that so sometimes it's good to turn your labels on so you can see how it unrolled that surface for you and um, I've been told that the unroll sometimes is affected by what view you're in so I'm just gonna try and unroll from top view and see if it gives me a different result I'm gonna keep labels on explode no and it looks like it gave me the same result so I wasn't sure if it did or not or not but that's what you get right there so the labels are really good it'll help you um, in order to separate the labels from the surface if you ungroup and then deselect your surface you'll have just your labels there and they're actually called text dots so what I've done is deselected the surface and kept the text dots selected so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup so I'm going to do group so that way they stay together so when I select one text dot they all, they're all selected right and I can hide them if I need to real easily and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put them on a new layer so that way I can turn them on and off easily yeah, so what I did is, um, since they were all grouped together, I ungrouped first. Then I deselected my surface with these still selected, and then I regrouped it. And I only grouped my text dots together. And if you look at the three-dimensional object, you'll see if you text, uh, select the text dots, or the labels, they are already grouped. And so I'm just going to put the group, uh, all the labels on one layer. I'm going to call this a label label layer.